all plants that grow outside are nice plants. Some of them are actually carnivorous plants and eat flies. We are going to go to Denver Botanic Gardens and visit some of these carnivorous plants and watch them eat live bugs. My name is Nick Snakenberg. I'm curator of tropical plants at Denver Botanic Gardens. And today we're going to look at insectivorous plants in our plant collections. Insectivorous plants are really popular with our visitors, especially uh, young kids. They find that uh, gore factor really appealing. So uh, we have basically four different uh, mechanisms for insectivory. Um, insectivorous plants are normally adapted to very poor soils. So they don't get a lot of their nutrition from the, uh, from the soil. They have to absorb some from the insects that they trap. Uh, there's four different mechanisms. There's sticky traps, snap traps, pitcher or fall traps, and then there's actually suction traps. An example of a sticky trap would be this drosera or a, a sundew. If you look closely at this plant, you can see uh, secretions on the little filaments on the leaves, and an insect will become stuck to that and when it struggles, it triggers other hairs with the sticky um, masses on the end to fold around the insect and slowly trap it and digest it, just like flypaper. An example of a suction uh, type plant would be this Utricularia. Um, this actually traps uh, soil insects, so you can't see the insectivorous part of this plant, but there's uh, small bladders uh, along the root masses underground, um, and when an insect gets close and triggers a hair, it uh, changes a, uh, causes a change in water pressure and will actually suck the insect into the bladder that's along the root. Saracenias are an example of a fall trap or a pitcher trap. Um, an insect will uh, climb up to the edge of these pitchers. Sometimes there's a sweet fragrance or sometimes a foul fragrance that attracts the insects. Um, they crawl along this slippery edge, slide inside, and are unable to climb back out. Um, they're slowly digested in pools of enzymes at the bottoms of these pitchers. Maybe one of the best uh, known insectivorous plants are Venus flytraps. Uh, this is an example of a trap insectivory. Along the pads at the end of these leaves are um, small hairs. And in or it takes a lot of energy to close this trap and so it doesn't want to uh, respond to false alarms. So if only one hair is triggered along the pad, it won't, cl it won't close on the insect. It will conserve its energy until it knows for sure that there's something there. So it has to trigger two hairs or one hair twice in a row, and that will cause the trap to close. I'll try to demonstrate the trap closure on this Venus flytrap by tripping a couple of the hairs. There it goes. And uh, that you can see that the uh, appendages here on the end are um, forked, so they close together and trap the insect inside where it's slowly digested. Most of the plants we've seen so far are temperate plants. A lot of them you could find growing in the uh, southeast United States, but we also have some tropical uh, insectivorous plants, and we'll go look at those next. In this greenhouse, we have more of the tropical insectivorous plants. Nepenthes is a genus mostly in Borneo and Southeast Asia. Nepenthes grow in a wide range of environments, a wide range of altitudes. So some are uh, very hot, low uh, elevation growing plants, and others grow at the top of mountains at 13, 14,000 feet, where it's much colder. Uh, the ones in this part, in this greenhouse, are warm growing. Uh, we have Nepenthes bicalcarata which if you look closely at this one, you'll see it has two fangs inside the lid of the pitcher. Uh, Nepenthes superbum, a very colorful surface, this ridge surface around the perimeter is called the peristome. It's very slick and when an insect crawls on that, he slides into the pitcher and gets tra trapped in enzymes that slowly digest the insect that's trapped inside. They come in all sizes too. There's small, uh, you know, maybe uh, one inch diameter pitchers, and then there's larger ones like this Nepenthes truncata. There are uh, reports of some being large enough to digest rats, although I think that's probably a stupid rat. They're, they're, not, they're not targeting rats, just uh, an unlucky rat that happens into a pitcher large enough to digest uh, small mammals. I mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of the insectivorous plants are uh, grow in nutrient poor soils, so they look for the insects as a, a supplemental nutrition. Two recent discoveries in the Nepenthes world that are really interesting is there's a species of bat that's been found to roost inside the pitchers. So when it uh, uh, defecates inside the pitcher, the guano is collected and it lives on the bat guano rather than the uh, insects that it digests. 
there is also a small shrew that actually uses the uh, pitchers almost like a toilet. They'll just sit right on top of the cup and use it as if they were going to a public restroom. And again, they're getting nutrition from the uh, manure rather than from insects that it digests. A lot of our insectivorous plants aren't continuously on display. The Nepenthes are on display uh, as they come into good uh, pitchering. They're not always um, bearing these pitchers at their end of the leaves. Uh, the fly traps and those things, you know, once they catch a fly, once it closes, it's done for two or three days. But we do try to rotate those things out on free days uh, so that visitors can have a hands-on experience with those plants. Thanks for joining us at Denver Botanic Gardens today. I hope you'll come by and, and see all the plants we have to enjoy, especially our carnivorous plant collections.